morning. Welcome to Gail Math and Science Academy. We are actually doing a little walkthrough this morning. It's early, about 30 minutes before the kids actually arrive at the school. This is our East Building, our primary building with grades 1, grades K through 4 pre-K through four, so we have three-year-olds all the way to fourth grade. We have a very creative crew in our primary building. They have decorated the walls and the doors for the holidays, and it is just absolutely gorgeous. When you walk in the door, you get the feel of the holidays. The kids love it. Try to keep a nice colorful building. See, we have a wall of fame per se. We have photographs from the 1940s all the way to the present graduating classes. Here you see our attendance challenge wall where Every month, kids are charted by room, trying to keep them here every day. Attendance expectations. Celebrating all of our students and the countries that they're coming from. Our attendance champs each month group with the best attendance gets a nice banner. Our attendance champs. Responsibility room. This is sister room where the kids can come with our social worker and counseling intern to have a timeout moment if they're having a bad day or they just need a moment to come in and relax and talk about what's going on. There are tables where they can do some artwork. A rug in the middle where we can do circles or pull up the chairs. We have some mats where they can actually roll on the mats. We can roll them out if they want to do some stretching or things like that. We have calm yourself down poster. We've got the spirit, different sireness, trustworthiness, responsibility, caring, respect. It's a quiet spot in the building. The signs quiet that we use when they're in the responsibility room. But to 
today, we're going to learn something else. We're going to learn... It's, it's funny. Maybe you will say it's funny. Learning how to be a learner. Learning how to be a learner. So it's, it's a lot of work. Yes? You like the puppy? But yeah. you know what? This puppy doesn't know how to behave in a kindergarten class. He doesn't know how to behave in a kindergarten class. We need to teach him how to behave in the classroom. So we supposed to, to be playing in the classroom? <laughs> no, right? So he needs to learn some rules. Like we, we do, right? Every single day we need to practice our classroom rule, right? So he needs to learn some rules. He is kind of hyper, right? So we gonna put him here, but he needs to learn how to learn how to behave in the classroom, right? So today we have some rules. We have some rules that we need to follow in the classroom. Because if we wanted to learn, because our objective for today is that we're learning to learn. Say it again. We're learning to learn. Or to be a learner, right? So we need what? Eyes to watch. So our eyes are watching. Show me your eyes. Our eyes are watching. Abdul, show me your eyes. Right here. It feels like a thunderstorm. <laughs> Thank you. We have a wide range of emotions today. A lot of, a lot of, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like a sunny day with um, some breeziness, some winds, because there's a lot of things that are happening in my life that feel like uh, the wind is kind of blowing on me. So, but it's a sunny day. I'm in a good mood. together. It's kind of an entrepreneurial uh, experiment too where the students will actually sell their product. Thank you. 
This is our responsibility room in our annex building with grades 5 through 8. Again, they can come in. Uh, this is where our social worker and counselors have uh, their anger management groups, um, CBITs uh, groups, uh, just some counseling. It's a really comfortable space. As you can see, we have a little couch for the kids to relax. We have a table area where they can actually come and sit and do some work or artwork, um, have some discussions. We also have a space for our circles. So it's just a really comfortable space with some encouraging uh, posters and words uh, throughout the room. Um, Self-control, good judgment, being uh, respectful, perseverance, and some, some other great sayings, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. One kind word can change someone's entire day. Sticks and stones will break your bones, but words can hurt even more. Words can hurt or heal. What did yours do today? As you can see, we kind of surround our students with I'm ready. I'm Josephine Hatch Skipper. I teach sixth grade here at Gale Academy. Okay, Ms. Skipper, I uh, have a couple of questions for you, about four questions. Uh, what SEO programs and activities have been successful in your classroom and with your students? Well, the second step program that we use on a um, weekly basis has been very helpful in developing my students. Um, the foundation of the lessons that we do are all on empathy. And I think that's very important for us as we develop as a community in our classroom about being empathetic toward each other. And so um, the lessons that we use, I love that there's an application piece to it. And so we're able to um, study the lesson, look at the components of empathy, and then put those things into practice. Great, great. Now, uh, why is social emotional learning important to you and your students? Um, as a teacher in the industry that, that I work in, it's not, we're, we're not machines. I'm building people. I'm building character. Um, one thing that's important to me as an educator is not just to uh, give the kids academic skills and say, okay, you're going to be a lawyer or you're going to be a policeman or a doctor. I think it's just as important to build their values and morals so that you have a moral doctor and a moral policeman and a, and a moral teacher. So um, the social emotional learning part is important in developing a well-rounded child, not just one who is academically sound, but also that is emotionally sound. So that's why I think these things are, are very important. Great. Number three, what changes or improvements school-wide have you witnessed with the implementation of the SEL programs? Um, changes that I've seen with the children are they're just responding to each other a lot more. Now that we still have our issues, um, you know, so I'm not going to sugarcoat it or make it like a fairy tale. So there are still sometimes with issues, but I still think that um, the children are developing more in a positive way, where there might have been um, 80 to 90 percent of uh, incidents happening that. Uh, 
were bad or, or negative, I could say now that maybe 20 to 25 percent, you know, of those students are doing something negative or um, something that's not beneficial to us in the classroom. So I have seen a decrease. I've seen um, uh, children want to develop a relationship with me more because the relationship part of uh, teaching is, is uh, so essential. And so instead of them just trying to handle things uh, by themselves and, and mm -hmm. take it to a negative um, place, they will involve me with it and allow me to mediate whatever it needs to happen. So I think the relationship part of, of SEL in between them and me um, has really uh, been impactful. Great. Last question. What advice would you give to educators who would like to implement SEL activities or programs in their classroom? Well, um, I think sometimes as teachers, we just think everything should be academic and we're like, okay, so what is this new thing and how is this really going to help? But I think you need to be open to seeing, um, to, to looking at how it can really be beneficial in your classroom. Don't just be a naysayer and say, you know, I don't want to do it because it's, it's non-academic. But it's part of it because you're dealing with people. And a part of dealing with people is developing them emotionally mm -hmm. and psychologically. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Skipper. Any other advice that you'd like to give to schools or just anything else that you'd like to say? Well, just be open to it and um, uh, look at the program and just sometimes you might have to tailor it to your students' needs. You know, sometimes it's not just, oh, I just follow it as a... Uh, as Bible as wrote, but you have to look and see how it'll, it'll affect your kids and how impactful or effective it'll be. Great. Thank you for your time and consideration, and um, keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> um, the activities that we are doing in my room currently are peace circles, and they work very well um, because it allows the students to really understand each other and learn something new about the other person. Why is social emotional learning important to you and your students? It's very important because it allows the student to understand the other person's feeling. And I think that's very important um, with today's society, with the video games, it kind of desensitizes kids. So when we do the peace circles, it kind of allows the students to really get into the emotional part of our world. I think overall the school is calmer. I can say that at least. What advice would you give to educators who like to who like to implement SEL activities or programs in their classrooms? My advice to teachers is to be very persistent. Um, also be patient. It is going to take time to get kids to open up to you as well as to their classmates. So please, please, those are the two words you should remember, consistency and patience. I think the most successful programs or activities um, was the uh, information pertaining to the brain, how um, certain things, certain stressors affect the brain. Uh, my students really enjoyed uh, the video clip on happiness and its effects on the brain as well as the information about dopamine and the activities that they could do to increase the dopamine. Why is social emotional learning important to you and your students? Um, it's important because it helps them resolve conflicts and helps them to better interact with their people. What advice would you give to educators who'd like to implement SEL activities or programs in their classrooms? The advice I would give would be to carve out a particular segment of time and be as consistent as possible with implementing those activities.